FNCS Grand Finals is now over and what a tournament we just had. Clicks and Venno first place. Could they hold on to their win or was it going to go to Peter Bot and Poyo finishing off their legendary run? Also, who made it to land? Do we really have names like Payson and Mero missing out on land? What went wrong and what happens next? I also want to talk about the finish on EU coming right down to the wire between Vico's team and Chaps. One of the most exciting finishes to an FNCS in such a long time. And I also want to answer the question, what happens next? Is there going to be an FNCS next season? And are we going to see huge teams play in it like Mongrel and Savage? Bit of a spoiler, they didn't make land, but what does this mean? Are they quitting or are they going to keep competing? There's a lot to talk about. Let's jump into it. Let's kick off talking about NA. Before I talk about day two, I know I didn't make a video yesterday. I'm sorry. Let's talk about day one because it sets the stage for what was one of the craziest finishes in FNCS history, not just on NA, which you probably heard about, but also on EU. So talk about NA. We finished off day one with none other than Clicks and Venno in first place. Clicks was set to finally win his first FNCS, but it wasn't by a big margin. Clicks was in first on 334 points, but Peter Bot and Poyo were closely behind on 313. They had the FNCS champions knocking on the door. Not only that, Peter Bot and Poyo finished off day one with an insanely impressive last three games and really had that momentum going into day two. Clicks, on the other hand, had a very unfortunate game six. Now, you probably saw it on Clicks' stream or you've heard about it. I will go into a bit of detail. Cypher and Shaw's team decided to change up their strategy in game six, and it massively affected Clicks and Venno. Clicks wasn't too happy about this, especially around the fact that Cypher and Shaw decided to break the mending machine. Now, the mending machine is the med vending machine that Clicks gets guaranteed on his split over at Snooty Steps. Now, this is pretty much pivotal to their entire strategy, the entire way that Clicks and Venno play the game, how they get all their early service. If you ever tune into Clicks and Venno when they're playing a duo tournament, they're in Storm like the entire game getting their surge. And it's because they have this med vending machine. They can buy med kits, they can buy big pots, they can top up if they need to. And we had Zypher and Short recognize this, target this, and break the med vending machine. Now, first when I heard this, I was like, man, that's kind of strange. Like going out of your way to ruin another team's performance. But the more I thought about it, I was like, man, breaking the med vending machine might actually be a good strategy. And I'm a huge fan of Clicks. I want to see Clicks do well, but I was thinking about doing this across the map. It doesn't take that long to break a med vending machine. And if it denies players around you a whole bunch of loot, making them weaker, that can only help you. I talked to a few pros about this. Some pros had differing opinions saying like, look, for a few reasons, making a team weak around you and pissing them off will make them just want to key you, which is not a great strategy. And I thought, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Also, Reet was telling me like, look, if you get enough gold, maybe off a refresh and you need to reboot or something, going back in zone and be able to buy extra medkits, you never know what's going to happen in a game because breaking the, vet the med vending machine can also ruin your future game. Even if you spend all your gold, you're rotating away from it, you might come back and use it, which is what Clicks and Venno do a lot. So this strategy was a little bit strange. It upset a lot of people and it had a lot of people thinking Clicks and Venno were going to get contested going into day two and this was going to ruin their tournament there was rumors that Zypher and Shaw were going to grieve Clicks and Venno none of this ended up happening but going into day two people thought Clicks and Venno were going to be triple contested now we also have to shout out Barker and Paz in third place winning two of six games on day one insanely incredible performance from a very very underrated team we had Bryson Bolt in fourth place with one less game play than anyone Bryson Bolt and Batman Bergen Rapid all live together. Their house's internet went out, meaning both teams weren't able to play a game. So they're going to have to play grand finals down a game. And that's very important because both these teams ended up doing extremely well. After we saw Queasy and Thomas struggle on EU, I was really worried to see how Booga and Aviv would go, but they finished off day one in fifth place. We had some other big teams in that top 10. We had Kanata Cooper, Victor V Paper, Trashy and Threats, Batman, Booga and Rapid, like I just talked about, and then Dukes and Sphinx. Now remember, there's 10 qual spots up for grabs for the LAN event, but any team already qualified, their spot will roll down. So qualification on EU and NA was going to be around that, you know, 13th, 14th mark, and that's very important going into tomorrow. But before we talk about NA day two and the ridiculous finish we had i want to talk about eu day one to set the stage over on eu we had i want to say an incredibly underrated duo you've probably heard about them vico and flixie in first place on 349 now i say underrated because they've never won an fncs but they are on such a dominant tear this season they've won so many duo cash cups they've popped off in fncs qualifiers they were one of the favorite teams coming into grand finals but neither of them have ever been able to win so could they handle the pressure not only that flixie was going up against his ex-duo mate yanis 
who is playing alongside Pixie in second place on 345 points. Only four points separating them. A single elimination. Much, much closer than our NA leaderboard. We also had Ping and Wox in third. It was just a Swedish leaderboard across the board on EU after day one. We had Swizzy and Vanya, our reigning FNCS champions in fourth. We had none other than Chap and Tini, the runner-ups from last season in fifth place. Then we had Kaido and Hydro, who are actually contesting the Middle East FNCS champions, Kindex and Phantom. And they were doing extremely well out of being contested. Then we had Chino and Skivy, uh, Pablo and Bevy's Mustache and Malabuka, a very strange position to see our FNCS champs in, Mustache and Malabuka. I had them and Peter Bon and Pollo pick to win FNCS this weekend. Once we had the massive cactus change, I thought with them, with having the constant shield replenishing medallion, having the mythic AR being as good as both those teams were, they should be dominating. So seeing Mustache and Malabuka in ninth was a little bit surprising. They were contested a couple times on day one, but it looks like the team ended up stopped contesting them. So I thought going into day two, that would be the massive boost they need. We also had Mappy and Kiro in 10th place. Now, we did have some big underperformers on this day, most notably Queasy and Thomas HD in 41st after day one. They'd already qualified for land, so there's a little bit less pressure on them, but I was really confused to see this team struggling. That's why I thought Bugan and Veeve might struggle as they're both dropping classy cores. It wasn't just them though. We had Seti and Kami, another huge name team that had also already called for land that was massively struggling in 37th place. But again, a lot of this was due to the fact that they were being contested by none other than Akira. You probably heard me talk about him. He's the player that qualified two grand finals on a console. Now, Akira ended up switching to PC for this grand finals, playing alongside YZY, but the French duo was really, really causing Kami and Seti some issues with them being on zero points after three games. We have never seen this in Kami and Seti's history. Going into day two, all eyes were on Clicks and Venno. Could Clicks hold on and win his first FNCS champion? Was Venno going to come over and win grand finals on NA, proving how much better EU pros were? Unfortunately, you probably already heard, no, Clicks and Venno did not win on day two. Now, they weren't heavily contested like a lot of people were expecting. They weren't triple contested the whole day. Unfortunately, we did have some weird drop spot situations. Evan and Flappy's team deciding to actually contest Clicks and Venno, but only for a couple games. One of the other games, they shot out the med vending machine I was talking about that Cypher and Shaw were targeting the day before. They ended up contesting it for a little bit. They're not contesting, going back to their split. It was all a little bit messy. And again, I really hate when this happens because I really want the winner to be celebrated as the best of the best, the team that deserved to win, and everyone acknowledges they won because they played the best. But NA, as always, always has a bit of drama. It's always a bit messy. And in the end, Peterbot and Poyo ended up coming out in first, rounding out one of the most insane chapters we have seen for a competitive team. Coming second, first, and first, finishing on 839 points. Again, I talked about it. Peterbot and Malabuka had such an advantage coming into this grand final. Their drop spot was phenomenal. Peterbot did end up going down to Sir one of the games mentioning that a lot of teams around them didn't want to peek them with that mythic assault rifle in the hands of Peterbot without the cacti to you know replenish that shield no one wanted to peek them and Peterbot and Poyo managed to make it work and had such a dominant performance you probably noticed though from looking at the leaderboard Clicks and Venno didn't even end up in second place or even third they dropped down to fourth place after winning day one and still holding first place through most of day two it was a very very unfortunate performance this still does have Clicks and Venno qualified to land we still will see them playing at the LAN event, which is in less than 40 days, by the way, for $2 million. But because it wasn't the win, a lot of people are seeing it as a failure for Clicks and Venno. I know both of them see it as a failure. I have to mention, as far as social media goes, Clicks peaked at almost 150,000 viewers on Twitch. 150,000 viewers is absolutely absurd for numbers these days. I never thought we'd see numbers like that ever again since the OG Fortnite days. Even in OG Fortnite days, that is an incredible performance. So Clicks again, should be incredibly proud, should be happy with himself. But we know, and we all know, Clicks and Venno wanted to win and a fourth place was gonna be seen as a failure. But we have to highlight second place here. Batman Booger and Rapid getting 760 points. Again, like I mentioned, with one less game played than ever everyone else. If you took his point average, which was about 70 points, he would have just been 10 points behind Peter Bot and Poyo, but we had a one and a half times multiplier on day two. Batman, Boog, and Rapid, you can make the argument if they got to play all 12 games, they would have both won their first FNCS ever. Again, Peter Bot and Poyo played fantastic. It's Fortnite at the end of the day. You never know what could have happened. They could have jumped in their 12 game, died on spawn, and got zero points. They could have won with 10 kills. 
you never know but i really wanted to highlight batman boog and rapid just had such a dominant season winning multiple duo cash cups qualifying to land coming second place against the reigning champs with one less game than everyone else one team that didn't necessarily need the big comeback they'd already qualified for land but definitely did it on day two was none other than acorn and cold having a massive jump up the leaderboard their performance on day two was insane winning two of the games getting a second and a sixth and a sixth they had a ridiculous ridiculous day two proving the teams like mr savage and mongol who needed that comeback could pull it off now i will mention acorn and cole were struggling because they were contested at brutal beachhead i don't know why you want to contest one of the best spawn fighting teams in the region that's already called for land looks like the team that was contesting them finally saw reason and stopped dropping on them going into day two and that is when they skyrocketed up the leaderboard with a couple more games they very easily could have given peterbot and poyo a run for their money and actually won the tournament but after a struggling day one it was a little bit too little too late now land qualification on na ended up going to top 12 because we had acorn and cold and peter von employer who already called for land placing in the top 10 so we had clicks and venno taking the spot trashy and threads dukes and sphinx aviv and booga bryce and bolts victor v and paper muzz and epic whale shadow and virgo and then fortnite tracker was glitched here it wasn't actually ages and rise it ended up being barker and pass they had a weird glitch on fortnite tracker where they were missing an entire win and elims worth of points so ages and rise were the last team that didn't make land event now i've also got to mention ages and rise were keyed by mongrel and savage in their very last game spoiler alert mongrel and savage were not able to pull off the cinderella run they really struggled on day two like they did day one they finished in 27th overall having a better day two but not by much but in their last game with everything on the line with nothing to lose they went out played aggressive they ran through ages and rise instantly died afterwards and because of that ages and rise didn't qualify i need to mention on stream mr savage instantly said i feel so bad sorry rise because again it didn't get them qualified he realized he may have just cost them their land event and sadly they did but it's fortnite mongol and savage didn't deliberately target them they needed a huge game to qualify they were going to do what they could and it just wasn't enough i do want to shout out again bryce and bolts qualifying with only 11 games played we had muzz and epic where pulling it up after all the drama with muzz and trashy splitting up early in the season victor v and paper pulling off a clutch finish the removal of the cacti i thought was going to ruin this team but they really did pull it off at the very end but you probably noticed there's a lot of big teams i didn't mention two absolutely massive players especially i didn't mention we are now going into a land event without Taysen, the five-time fncs champion unarguably one of the greatest players of all time and maybe even crazier mero the reigning global champ he won the last land event now not going in chapter five but they weren't alone we had some other huge names missing out on qualification Blaha and Mixon falling short after coming all the way over from EU. We had Pink, obviously, alongside Mero. Death and Edgy, Kylie and Verd, Skittles and Chubbs. All these big names missed out. And a lot of our big land teams were already qualified, struggling as well. Again, it didn't mean as much for teams like Kanata and Cooper that missed out on qualifying. Reed and Ritual struggling. Alex and Worthy out of OCE. It is worth mentioning with all of the drama with EU coming over and invading and proving that EU is the best, we only had one player out of all the EU players that came over actually get a qualification spot, and that was Venno. We actually managed to see not a single EU player win a game in the 12 games of finals. So I know there's a lot of drama around here between EU versus NA. Taysen was quick to mention on social media the cacti change two days before grands one day before grands massively upset his performance so i'll let you be the judge whether you think that was enough to warrant the poor performance from a lot of the eu players maybe na does deserve a little bit more respect i know most na pros were agreeing that eu was the harder region but after these eu pros have come over and struggled you have to ask the question is na maybe a bit better than what a lot of people think at the same time most of these eu players were playing with an na counterpart there was only a couple of eu teams mongrel savage and blaha mixon being the only double eu team that came over so it was very interesting to see how this shook up it was super heartbreaking to see mongrel and savage not make it to land and ask the big question will mongrel and savage be retiring is mongrel going to walk away from fortnite again will they still keep competing together there was a period mongrel was talking on stream about whether he was going to retire and it sounded like he did want to step away from the game but after some, you know, some good vibes with Savage, they hugged it out on stream. The chat was gassing them up, saying how proud of them they were. It looks like Mongrel will be sticking around, but sticking around for what? What happens now? We have the land event in less than 40 days, but if teams aren't qualified, what are they gonna do? 
We have more cash cups until the new season starts, which is again, only like a little over a week away. But what happens next? Are we gonna have a land event next season? And it looks like, no, it looks like we most likely are not going to have a land event next season in the Marvel season. At least that's what we have to go off from the last two chapters. Whenever there is a land FNCS, they do not run a regular FNCS. This could change, but it would be a little bit weird fitting in the timing with all the pros going to the land. A lot of people are hopeful for an OG FNCS. I know I am. It was leaked in the game files a while ago. It could still be happening, but we don't know it is happening. And with the time of OG season being roughly around December, Epic going on their break for Christmas, I don't really know how they're going to fit it in. So at this point, we might have no FNCS now until about January or February. So there's plenty of time for things to change, but I do really hope Mongol and Savage stick around playing the duo cash cups, keep competing in tournaments because it was so fun to see them go on this massive Cinderella run. And honestly, I really thought they could do it i know a lot of teams are now going to point at them and say oh they never had a chance it was just because of the content you know what i mean it's because they're big names everyone was fanboying until the cactus changed they were looking very very likely to make land so whether it was the cactus nerf whether it was just the pressure of grants things didn't go their way they underperformed but i think it's fair to say that they were 100 on their way to qualifying land and definitely could have in a different timeline i don't think it's fair to now say that people are just fanboying i will always remember this run from mongol and savage and think they almost did it and they very well could have switching gears and taking a look at eu we had such an exciting finish such a nail-biting finish to the region that was seen kind of as like you know the war up the appetizer to the main course that was na a lot of people saying eu was boring all the good pros left but man it was such an exciting grand finals to watch we had none other than vico and flixie holding on to their first place right to the very end getting an 863 point win but it came down to the very last game chap and teeny after being the runners up last season looking to try to take their first fncs title they managed to pull off a massive seven elim win in their last game after vico went down early though Flixie pulled off a one Elim seventh clutching so many points and clutching that team's grand finals but I don't want to say Vico got carried because Vico actually set an all-time record for the most amount of Elims any player has ever gotten in EU grands at 43 such a dominant performance from these two who had never won an FNCS previously they handled the pressure and Vico's reaction was so wholesome I'll play it here for you it really is just good vibes all around let's go <laughs> I wanted to shout out the lucky last and I think honestly saving one of the best for last is actually Razaru. If you don't know who that is or you haven't heard about who I'm talking about, I wouldn't blame you. He's extremely low key, but he's actually the coach of not only Peterbot and Poyo, but Vico and Flixie. So he just coached Peterbot and Poyo to one of the most dominant runs we've seen from a team in a chapter, second, first, and first. And now he just coached Vico and Flixie both to their first ever FNCS win. Coaching the EU and NA FNCS winners is an achievement I don't think we've ever seen before. And Razaru was just so happy with his result, so happy for his players, so proud of what they've done as a team. And he's honestly just a really wholesome guy. He doesn't look for any attention, didn't ask me to shout him out. I just thought that was worth mentioning because it's just such a ridiculous performance. Performance. And again, a lot of people look at coaches of, oh, you just, you know, you coach the big names, so of course they're already good, so how much are you actually doing? I mean, Vico and Flixie aren't bad players. No one thinks they're bad, but they never won an FNCS. Either of them, you put them together and they win their first FNCS working with Razaru. It's a very good sign of just how good he is. He's also been working with Rezon, Vadil, and a whole bunch of other teams. So I really want to shout out one of the players behind the scene that was really making these big moves and helping them out. 